Hey yo YouTube, Flowcat here, and welcome to my weekly update video. This week I definitely have a lot more to talk about because I did the Parade of Providence event. Now to get access to the Parade of Providence event, I had to do a couple of quests. I had to do an interlude Archon quest and I'll hate them's character quest. I have been sort of taking things really slowly and been stocking up on quests for months and months, so it does feel good to start tackling them and catching back up on where everything is in the story. This week, I'm pretty much going to be giving my thoughts on those quests, on the Parade of Providence event, as well as some updated thoughts on Baiju. And since we just had the live stream for 3.7, I want to give my thoughts on that as well as the patches here on out leading up to Fontaine. I did the Archon Quest interlude chapter as well as I'll Hate Them's character quest on stream. You're more than welcome to go ahead and watch those VODs if you would like, but I'm just gonna go ahead and give some thoughts on those quests real quick. The interlude Archon Quest was pretty all right. It wasn't super exciting. It was pretty interesting and it gave a closer look at, you know, our boy Scaramouche and, uh, you know, other things as well. I do like that we were able to pick the name for Scaramouche at the end. That was pretty interesting. And I have a clip that I'm gonna shove in right here. So it's kind of like, like you can change it once after, like it says you get the item. So it seems like you can uh, change it afterwards if you don't like what you do. I've been thinking about this for months, guys. I've been planning. And if it doesn't let me do this, I do not know what I'm going to do with myself. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Oh, all right. If you say so. <laughs> Absolutely. There. Now you have a name of your own. What about a nickname? Are you done yet? Uh, uh, stupid! <laughs> Stop rushing me! Perfect. I had been thinking about that name for a long time and it just it just fits him so well, especially considering like that little fable that they told showed Skara as like a cat. I just I just thought that was too appropriate and adorable. So I I I, I, I regret nothing. I mean it was interesting to learn that the jester um you know is from Conria officially, but I think we already sort of knew that anyway. So that wasn't really a super huge lore reveal. Like overall, this interlude Archon Quest didn't provide a lot of information that we didn't already know. It sort of just was a nice little breather, I'm guessing, before things get more intense again. As for Alhatham's character quest, uh, it was good. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Alhatham, to be honest. And so I didn't particularly enjoy it. It, it felt a little bit like I'm smarter than you, the quest. <laughs> where it's just Al Haytham like flexing the entire quest about how smart he is. And I don't know, like I was hoping to maybe get a little bit more of just his personal backstory and stuff. But Al Haytham, I guess, is sort of just a simple guy. You know, he's sort of just an ego guy. And that's what the quest was about. And yeah, so I don't I really don't have anything else to say about that one. Let's go ahead and talk about the Parade of Providence. I just got done with this beefy, beefy event. It took me all totaled about six and a half hours to do this event, not skipping any dialogue in the cutscenes, taking small breaks between and finishing all the booths. This event was massive, actually. I was not expecting it to be so long and I was not expecting the quests to be like this movie, um, but it was and I'm not entirely disappointed. I will say I ended up waiting too long on the event. I did feel a little bit stressed for time here at doing the event at the end, but I managed to get everything done in time with time to spare. Uh, and the only thing that it really affected was my video release. <laughs> I am a little late on dropping this video because this event was a beefy boy, uh, to say the least. Overall, my thoughts on it were very positive. I loved to see all the character interactions. It was cool to see the characters out and about in the world and you could go and talk to them between particular events and get their thoughts, see where they were at in the competition. It just felt like a really neat way 
to approach the event and I, I liked it a lot. I thought that it was really cool. It really did feel like we were experiencing the competition in real time with the characters. And I just, I thought that that was kind of a feeling that we haven't really had before in Genshin. And as for the main plot of it, it was really well written. And I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really like Kave that much at the start he just kind of seemed like an angry boy but as you get to learn more about Kave I just you get to see his more empathetic side and you realize that he has this sort of like this armor where like he's sort of rude and feisty and just you know that kind of person where he's a little bit defensive by nature but he is absolutely a uh, like heart of gold kind of person. The second that Kave sees someone struggling or sees someone who's down on their luck he will do everything to his detriment even, to help that person. And I, I just think it was really cool to see that character be brought out in him throughout the quest. It feels like he really went through a lot of development. As well, it was very cool to see Faruzan and Layla and everybody else just out and about and exploring the event. Sino was just hilarious to me. His hyper fixation on that card was just hilarious to me. And Tignari provided a lot of great interesting dialogue as well i could probably ramble about this for quite a while i thought it was pretty interesting how they showed that there are differing philosophies in sumeru about the way the world is and the way that people are and the way that things function and that has sometimes come to head but sumeru is the region where people essentially explore those differences and try to learn and grow their knowledge and wisdom so it was just very, very cool to see people from all different walks of life and all different mindsets interacting and problem solving and discussing deep topics. I really particularly enjoyed that they expanded upon Alhatham and Kaveh's relationship. On the surface, they obviously tease each other a lot and there's, you know, Kaveh getting angry and Alhatham just not caring and that's, you know, sort of the shtick of it. But underneath that surface, you see that they actually care about each other and that they constantly are challenging each other out of a sort of like desire to be there for each other. Even if they disagree on many, many things, and even if they're just like polar opposites as people, it's so cool to see that they still have this bond and this relationship where they could be arguing for the rest of their lives, but they'll still look out for each other. So yeah, that got me a little bit emotional. I'm not gonna lie. I was choking back some tears at the end when Alhatham like went out of his way to help Kave learn about his father and what happened to him. Good stuff. Uh, outside of the story, we had these little booths where you could do mini games. And I do have to say that I enjoyed the mini games. I like that they really weren't complicated. They didn't have too many steps. You sort of just show up at the booth, you do the mini game and you move on. I think that that's a good strategy moving forward for these kinds of things, because when they make the mini games like overcomplicated or just, you know, too much to learn all at once, it just ends up feeling really exhausting and it just feels frustrating rather than like having fun. I genuinely had quite a bit of fun with some of these booths, particularly my favorite ones were the rhythm one as well as the storytelling one. I enjoyed the rhythm game one. It was very cute and it was super fun. You know, you just, you're a little shroom boar bashing through fences. Like that was so, <laughs> that was good. That was good. Uh, but also the storytelling one was pretty fun. It was like a little bit of a riddle. You know, they tell you a story and you've got to try to find the truth behind the story by asking questions or guessing at the truth. I, I liked it. I thought it was pretty interesting. I actually was a little bit sad that there were only three of them it would have been nice to to do some more to be honest but that's going to bring me pretty much to the end of my thoughts on the parade of providence event great event i love seeing these heavy story emphasis events even though they are quite a lot to get through i feel like it is a journey worth taking it brings us closer to the characters and it's just it's just such a good time like i love these kinds of events and i know that now we're in between regions and there's not going to be well I'll, I'll talk about this a bit more later but yeah okay other than that i have some new information on baiju i have been trying out a baiju team it's Baiju, Mona, Dia, and Ayato, and it is a super fun Burgeon team. I know that it's an all five-star team, so that's kind of, you know, whatever, but it's just, oh man, it's just a really good team. And honestly, Baiju, Dia are sort of the core of the team, and Mona and Ayato could be swapped out with other Hydro units, depending on your preference. So this is sort of like a team archetype that'll only grow as we get more Hydro units. But yeah, it's just, it's a Burgeon team, and it's super tanky, and it provides quite a bit of DPS. Uh, you could sort of just stand there and deal a bunch of damage as Ayato, and 
you get to use Dia's burst with Mona's burst, and that's obviously fun. And it just feels really good when you do that first punch of Dia's burst and you hit like five Dendro cores and also vape for a bunch of damage. It, it, it's, it's good stuff. But yeah, I mean, my updated thoughts on Baiju are that he's pretty good. I, I like him a lot. I think that he provides quite a bit of value and his C1 is pretty tempting. It looks pretty good. I think I might try to get that on his next banner. So definitely no regret in pulling Baiju. Uh, having found this team archetype that uses Mona as well as Ayato, which are two units that I like, but I've not really found a good team for. This is a good, good team for them. And to be honest, this may just be my mainstay Dia team for a long time. Other than all of that, I wanted to talk about the 3.7 update live stream that just came out this past weekend and talk about you know 3.7 as well as moving forward until Fontaine the live stream definitely confirmed what I was thinking which is that 3.7 and every patch until Fontaine beyond that are going to be patches that you can save you can skip you can pull for reruns but there aren't going to be like massive new regions there's not going to be a bunch of new units it's going to be a very chill couple of patches i'm guessing two or three patches until fontaine they're going to be very chill with just events maybe more festival kind of things and stuff that is really just meant to pass the time until fontaine comes out now i know some people will lament the fact that these are sort of quote unquote filler patches but i think that we need filler patches if every patch was something crazy and new, a new region, a new character, a new story arc, a new this, a new that. It would create exhaustion and fatigue in the player base. Like me, for example, I'm thankful to have a couple patches where I can just save some primo gems. I can, you know, just work on building some units that I've been kind of putting on the back burner for the time being. And it just gives us time to chill before a whole new region and a bunch of new units come flying at us every single patch. I'm glad that the patches are calming down and that things are sort of taking a little bit of a chill pill before Fontaine. With that being said, we did get a glance at our first Fontaine design. They showed off Charlotte, who will be assumedly one of the first units we get in Fontaine. Uh, that's sort of uncertain, but she will be a unit in Fontaine. We know that much. And this is a really cool thing because it gives us a glimpse at how Fontaine units might be designed or how they may look when we get there. And she sort of gives off this like old European steampunk industrial vibe. It's sort of hard to describe, but it's sort of like if the industrial revolution were cuter and not so filled with child labor. <laughs> Um, no, I'm, I'm just that was that was silly, but it, it just it looks good. It looks like there's going to be um, kind of the aesthetic that I was thinking of, which is sort of this steampunky old style vibe, which looks really cool. I'm excited to see it. Also, I cannot wait to hear the music for Fontaine. I, I cannot wait. I just I just can't. <laughs> I just can't wait for that. We also got to look at Carrara. I think I'm saying that right who looks interesting. She looks kind of like a support. She provides like a shield, maybe dendro application. It's almost like they kind of combine Sayu and Yanfei in sort of this dendro form. I, I, I don't know really, but she looks like she will work well with off-field electro application, maybe like Kuki or Fischl or Yaimiko. I, I really don't have a lot to say about her right now because they didn't show much of her kit and it was a little bit all over the place, to be honest. Like she provides a shield, but she also turns into a cat box and can run up walls. But she can also do this thing where she spawns a bunch of kitty dendro bombs, which kind of looks like her burst. It, it's just hard to say. It's just hard to say for now. I think that if her burst is just a straight up attack that spawns these dendro bombs and she has like a low cost burst with like a, you know, a skill that provides a shield and also turns her into the kitty box or whatever, she could be a pretty valuable support. But we will just have to wait and see. She will certainly be useful for exploration. That much is clear. That's pretty much everything I had written down for what I was going to talk about this week. I felt like it was a pretty good week for me with Genshin. I honestly had a hard time pulling myself away from Tears of the Kingdom to record this video and also, you know, do the Parade of Providence event, but I am so glad that I did. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom is sucking the soul straight out of my body and I cannot help but return to it anytime I'm not doing something else. 
but that is sort of just the way that it is. Next week, I am planning on doing some more character quests, some more Archon quests, so there will definitely be some more of that kind of stuff on the way. That's pretty much all I had to really talk about this week. But before I go, I just wanted to do a highlighted comment real quick. I want to start doing highlighted comments at the end of my videos, so if you have thoughts to share, like for instance about the Parade of Providence event, you can share them down below and next week, I will highlight comments that I think are worth sharing or talking about or whatever, and we'll do the thing. It'll be great. It'll be wonderful. But since uh, this is only like week two of my weekly update series, I only have one comment from my last video, and we'll go over that now. His comment is from Mark, and Mark said, Hey Flo, love that you came up with this sort of schedule. I've been stuck doing Call of Duty content on my channel due to my lack of knowledge in video editing and no due date for my friend to finish editing, plus other life priorities for both of us. I've also been doing music on another channel, which adds to the workload, so I've been highly discouraged. Since I am also leaving for college, I'm not sure whether this hobby of content creation will exist in my schedule, but this video has given me some consideration to do things how you are doing. Maybe it won't be as focused, but if I take each bit time learning step by step, I could organize myself to easily get my important work done and push out content at the same time. Keep bringing in chill vibes. First of all, thank you for the comment, Mark. I appreciate that. And second of all, I totally understand how discouraging content creation can be. It can be a real slog when you put your heart into it and you're not seeing the growth that you want to see or you're not getting the results that you want to see. And to be honest, all I can say is to try to focus on what's important to you. Like for me right now, what matters is just being consistent. That's why I came up with this video schedule idea. Like I'm going to put out a weekly video once a week. And because that's my primary goal, I don't have to care about it being like the best video ever or going viral or being a big success, you know, and that change in my mindset has been big for me because now it's it's a very simple goal get a video out once a week pull myself out of all the complexities that I've been trying to think about like oh man oh this that oh oh what if this oh but but maybe it's not gonna go oh but maybe it's not a good video all that matters is that I keep putting out videos and keep streaming as time goes on I can improve I can get better and I can learn and grow as a content creator but really just like doing the thing is the primary thing. So try not to get it discouraged. You know, I think that's like honestly the thing with content creation. It's a very hard thing to do and it's very easy to just like not do it. I could just stop making content tomorrow and honestly my life would probably get easier because of it. But to me this is something that I care about and something that I hope will pay off someday. And so I'm willing to put in the effort and put in the time and also deal with how discouraging it can be. So yeah, you're not alone there. It can be pretty tough, but I encourage you to keep going with it and stick with it. And I hope someday it works out for you too. And yeah, that's my only highlighted comment this week. Again, if you'd like to have a comment highlighted, please leave one down below. I'm sure with like the parade of Providence and everything coming to a close, there will be people who want to discuss that as well. All right, and just a couple things before I go, I have a friendly Discord community and you are more than welcome to join. The link to the Discord will be in the pinned comment of my video, also the description of my video. And just a couple other things to plug, I have a Patreon and if you want to support my content in the future, I will be trying to provide unique benefits to my Patreon. But for now, the unique benefit is that you are helping me uh, not give up. <laughs> That's the benefit, but I promise that, yeah, later on, I will be trying to provide some kind of unique sort of incentive for my Patreon members. Other than that, do everything that you can to appease the YouTube overlord, such as liking and subscribing and all that great stuff. And until next time, stay healthy, stay hydrated. Peace.